Hey guys, uh, so welcome back. If I could say welcome back, I just feel as if like this is something that we've always been doing. Let me say welcome back. <laughs> but anyway, um, I am Judah Zubayo and I'm here with my very beautiful wife. Newly wedded wife. Newly wedded wife. Brand new wife. Mm -hmm. Fresh mm -hmm. wife. Freshest <laughs> wife ever. A newly wedded wife, Mrs. Love Zubayo. Mrs. Love Zubayo. And yep. we're here talking about how we met. How we met. So um, we did a part one of this. We did like a video some days back. Mm -hmm. And we we're talking about how our relationship started. Because if you didn't know, we just got married, by the way. So we did a video talking about how we met. And we didn't complete the entire story of the process of us getting here that we are now married. And we asked you guys if you would love to have a part two of that talk and you guys said yes mm -hmm. over activities. and over again you were saying yes that we should do a part two on facebook on youtube and everywhere we're saying we should, we should do a part two so this is us right yep giving you guys the part two mm -hmm. of the gist on how we met and how we got to be here today yes so so where did we stop in part one? Oh, we stopped there i think where to start from where i can't remember Yes, the lines he used. We yeah. just talked about where we met and where he took my number. And How we started transitioning yes, into the process and everything. When I knew it was serious and when he also knew it was something serious mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah. So I think one of the things that we didn't mention was that when we met, you know, before we became friends, when we started talking and all of that, you were actually in a relationship. Yes, I was. Yes, she was in a relationship at the time. I wasn't really in a relationship. I just like ended a long relationship before we met and yes i was talking to a couple of people if i'm being honest but um i wasn't really in any relationship at the time but she was in a full-blown relationship she was in a in an actual relationship <laughs> when the man of god came and um i i say, i usually tell people this my close friends i've told them but people don't believe it they say ah you're lying but when we started talking it was not because i wanted to date you you know yeah. i just wanted purely for us to be friends so even while she was in that relationship, um, you know, we were just talking. We, I didn't have any ulterior motive. It was not like I was trying to get her to stop being with the person that she was with. Or was, or was that the case? Maybe if I say people no, don't no, believe. No, what, what was it like when we started talking and you were in a relationship? Um, we were just talking. Like I said in the previous video, I had my boundaries. I had my walls up. I was mm -hmm. careful. You know, I related with a lot of people. So I had so many things I was cautious about. And um, I also never had a thought of dating him or even having a relationship. It never even crossed my mind, mm. being very real and honest. The thing was, I just um, appreciated the level of you know, connection and the way we are comfortable talking about most of everything. That was just one thing that was just striking. But other than that, it's hard to believe, yeah, but that was it. Yeah, it's hard <laughs> to believe. I know you guys will never still believe. You were just saying, ah, man of God, you were just trying to wait for her or trying to engineer her <laughs> break, you know. But that was not the case, no, honestly. No, yeah. You know, that, that relationship ended naturally. Yeah, naturally. You know, and... It was um, not influenced by him or anything. At all. Honestly, honestly, it wasn't. It was so, um, yes. So, I think we became... We were friends for a long while. How long were we friends before we started even talking about... Yeah. Like a year. Yeah. It was probably a bit over a year, in fact. I'm sure, yes. Yes, I think it was even more than a year. year. Mm -hmm. You know, we were friends. We were just talking. You know, she was in that relationship. The relationship ended. We were still friends. But, you know, after a while, I was like, seems as if there's something here with this particular lady, this wow. sister of mine. Wow. You know, because I, I was always praying. Like I said, I was in a long relationship before meeting her. And one of the things that I didn't want to do was to enter into a relationship again that would fail. You know, so I was really prayerful at the time. And as you might assume, for someone like me, based on what I do, being a minister of the gospel, a, a musician and all of that, you know, we have lots of girls around. You know, there are always ladies around. You know, there are probably even more ladies who might be interested in you. I've had lots of ladies before who would, you know, even propose wanting to be in a relationship with you. So I didn't want to take that decision lightly of being with someone because... I knew that if I was going to be in another relationship, it would it would be with the person that I'm going to marry. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you, you probably should explain how we started really dating. Because if I say it, probably. Uh, I'm just a young side. 
Then I'll just That's my own side that I'm, that I'm explaining. Huh, okay. Right, so like what, I always what promise I'll give you guys just. So um, we were friends, yes, and um, I was in a relationship, but I was careful, like I said. I was cautious about so many things. But um, like he said, the relationship ended naturally. And in that course, he told me how he felt. But the way he said it was in two phases. The first one was, I, I feel connected to you. I feel drawn to you. Like, huh, I feel drawn to you. Drawn near to me. <laughs> and I will draw near to you. That was what he said. I didn't remember saying anything. That was at the studio. I remember we hung out that evening and then he told me that. I don't know what I said, really. I don't remember what I said, actually. But I just knew we stopped talking for a while. I didn't we remember did? that. Yeah, before my graduation, oh. we actually stopped talking for a while. Like, I, we stopped calling frequently, stopped texting regularly, and all that. So, um, for my graduation, my undergrad um, graduation, I actually just snapped the invitation card and said, "Let me just send it." You know, let him know that because I was, I was, and finally in college at that time when we started actually talking. So that's really a long time ago. So yes, um. I sent it to him and I don't know really, I don't remember even what he responded and said, but yeah, I just knew the night before the Saturday he called me and said he's always, I think I don't really remember exactly what we talked about. I would like, but I just knew we stopped you talking. You know, I have so many day. lines, <laughs> but I don't even know which one I used, but you know. I remember, I won't forget the lines. I'm I a lyricist. I, <laughs> I can writer. never forget the lines. Hello? Yes, so he said that, and being cautious, I just remember that we stopped talking for a while. We weren't talking that much. He called me the night before my graduation. He talked and said he was always tempted to want to call me, but he just decided to, like, you know, just give me space and everything. And then he showed up. I think up. there's a lesson there for our brothers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. You, know, you have to give space. <laughs> Allow the woman of God to pray. Take her time. Make sure she's hearing. That was when God. he told me he was drawn to me, or he never would say the other part yet. Yes. So let's go. Let's so go I left you. Yes. I don't even remember that I did that, but did you know, that, so I yes. allowed you to take I your time. I for a bit. After he told me I, that. I allowed my, my action <laughs> to do the talking for me. Wow. So the woman will go pray and, you know. Mm -hmm. Continue, continue. Yes, so yes. Um, he shut off my graduation. I would interrupt you again. And then, but, you know. <laughs> yes, he actually in, came for my graduation. It was at National Stadium, which was shocking as well. I wondered, I was like, okay, he actually showed up. I was really, really actually happy that he did. And um, we started off again talking back as well from there. On and on and on and on. On and on and on and on. So what happened? We also hung out again at a restaurant and we were sitting down talking and I just, he just like held me a little bit closer to him and said, I love you a lot. I love you a lot. That Hello. was his lines. I didn't say any other thing. No, nothing, no, no vibes, no No Shakespeare. Shakespeare. <laughs> Same together. I didn't, I, I didn't use any Shakespearean lines, you know. I didn't take any point from the internet. Mm -hmm. I just told you that I love you, I love you a lot. Guys, that might Straight be the line the that point. you need. I love you a lot. And, and I think the reason why it probably meant as much is because I've never said yes, that he never before. said that. I, it's not a word that I use lightly. Yeah. You know, and he actually told me that. So when he said it, I was, oh, I said, God, yeah. oh, what is this? Yeah, because I don't it play with heavy. that word. For me to say I love you. That. So it's not, it's not the common thing for me to say I love you. Yeah. So I did say I love you a lot. And then... I didn't say anything back. You didn't say anything back. but um, I didn't say anything back. And but that's where it was beautiful. After he told me that, I never said anything back. I just I remember asking him the next day or a few days, because it was during Corona or something. So there was lockdown, and we were I wasn't going to work as often as. So um, I asked him why he said that to me, and he told me he had no specific reason. There's nothing specific that he would pin down on why he said that and just think that was what he felt i know okay yeah he told me that i took it yes 
and I also was also praying about because there were so many things going on around me in my relationship at that time. Physically, there was so much so I was actually praying for, you know, direction and clarity on so many things. You know, not being carried away by my emotion, yeah. wanting to do things the way I wanted mm. to. I always, you know, desired God to be the centerpiece of my life yeah. entirely. So whatever he was going to say counted. And yes, one thing that I actually, actually started praying as well. And then my relationship ended by itself. I can't go into the details of that, but yes. But after him telling me I love you a lot, he never came back with pressure like, told you this, you didn't see anything back. And it took over months. Like months, even after the relationship I came out of, he never pressured me at all. I remember that's asking what him, mean. what's the confidence you had in telling me I love you a lot and just leaving me like that? I had prayed. That's the confidence I had. Just I had right. confirmation from God. And I knew I wasn't moving by my emotions. And I knew it was the will of God. I honestly knew that before I told you. You know, because I I, I, I knew what it meant to enter into a relationship based on just feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. especially when you are being committed to someone and you're seeing that it's going to be something that will be for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So when I got to say that to you, I was already convinced. I had prayed, I settled it with God. I knew that it was something that was going to work out, you know. And, you know, so when I told you, I knew that you are a woman of God. So if God said it to me, he was going to confirm it to you. So I didn't need to put any pressure. Take note of that. You know, I didn't need to, like, put any pressure asking you that, ah, what is it now? I've told you this thing. Or, or is it, what is it? if you don't want me, please tell me. I didn't want to do all of that. I knew that if it was the will of God, it would happen, you know, naturally. So that's what I did. And I think it took its, its time. Yeah, it took its time. And then it, we, took, it took, like, a, a while. A while. It took really a while, I remember, it's about over months, mm. not even one or two or three, more than six months yeah. before I actually, after praying, mm -hmm. like you said, and when I was praying, I was not praying with an image in my heart that, oh God, this person has told me his intention, blah, 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 no, 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 no. I was generally praying that, God, let me be sensitive to knowing what is for me, yeah. from you directly, mm -hmm. not what I want for myself, what you know I need in my life, what you know I need as a person, you know my entire makeup, you know how I am made, you know what I need and everything. So let me be sensitive not to miss, you know, the that point when the person that is the right one for me, you know, comes. And I was praying over and over again, over and over again. I was just like, I was just like, what you're praying for is right in front of you. It's right in front of you. So I remember sometimes he'll tell me, okay, after he tell me that I love you a lot, a few times maybe over the phone, he'll tell me I love you and I won't respond. I remember him telling me one time to just say, okay, just say thank you after I tell you I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I said that? Yeah. yeah. They just say thank you. He said, just say thank you after, um, say, after I say I love you. No, you don't need to say it back. So yeah. That's one thing. I didn't want you to just people. say no, it because I said it. Yes, yes. You know, I don't yes. even want you to just say it because of you don't want me to feel bad. I wanted you to also get to that point I'm where you, you, you were certain. So when you said it, I would know that you were saying something that you mean. Mm -hmm. That's why probably I said, well, just say thank you for now until, until you get to that point, mm -hmm. you know. So I was, I wasn't, I think, um, 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 I think every man, you know, in making a decision with who you have, on who you have to settle down with, there has to be a certain level of confidence that you have, yes. you know, in knowing that this is the person that mm -hmm. God has, you know, set before you to mm -hmm. be your wife, mm -hmm. you know, because with that confidence, it will cause you not to be in a state of desire when you are going okay. to talk to people or disturbing people or talk to this one to talk to this lady for me or you start Ooh, using all sort of means, means yes. you feel like oh maybe i need to spend money or oh, maybe i need to give her this or maybe so she I, doesn't I saw her in a vision. yes or you start adding all these <laughs> lies now you know to mm -hmm. just try to coerce her beyond her will to settle down with you because i believe that's the reason why some people after now you know when things started start will start getting tough they'll be like you know i didn't i don't really want this person no. yeah. You know, because that's they didn't true. get to that place by themselves. Yeah, they were true. coerced really by true. you, you know, and they felt pity for you. And I didn't want, I don't want anyone to feel pity for me, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. anyway, I'm sure that there's so much more you, you would say. But I know one of the things that I did when we actually now started dating was I met, I went to meet your parents first. Yes. 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 After, it was not even for a long while. Yes. After they told me that and my response, sorry, I think said what I said back. So after a few months, after praying and then I got... The confirmation and a part of the the spiritual part of it physically for the first time i was at ease with someone i was free to be myself 
I did not have to pretend to be somebody else. Talking to him, I was just okay. There was everything. I was physically attracted to him, which is important. Mm -hmm. The muscles and the, you know, yeah. everything else. <laughs> yeah, so I was the physical part, every other thing, mentally, spiritually, physically, everything was in place. So I, after praying, and then I had that. So the next day I called him that I wanted to see him. So we hung up at the beach and I started talking and then I told him, I love you. I never said it carefully as well. So when I said it, he knew it meant something. So that's right. how our relationship started. That's how it started. And um, I, I, I wanted to do it the right way, you know, because when our relationship started, I, I, you would tell me the timeline, but I know that it wasn't too long after that I went to meet your, no, your, no, your parents. Sure, no. yeah. Yes. So I think they were probably, I don't know if they were probably one of the first people that we met and told also. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think we... I was told. Yes, we told, you know, we told God. some spiritual people, you know, told the man I of God. So, sorry, we actually, um, went, we actually went out, I think the first date or the second date when the relationship started, we went to a restaurant and that's when we talked about the relationship being private no pressure of the social media stuff and everything yeah. and acknowledge that we needed to inform people we valued and respected so that's, that's what we, we did so we told spiritual people that we had around us we told a couple of family members yeah. and then not too long after went i went to immediately to meet her parents because i knew that if we were going to be in a relationship it's because we want to get married and we're working towards getting married so and i wasn't like one guy who just wanted to be with a girl and then break her heart and leave her so i was like why not go meet her parents you know because i was a man of god assured, myself yeah. you know so i thought it was and i and i had that great respect for me mm -hmm. because he had invited me a couple of times and he always referred to me as minister and, I, and because of that respect that he had for me your parents so i felt like it was the most respectful thing to do and the right thing to do to go and meet them and tell them so that they would at least know mm -hmm. you know so um yeah so we told your parents a while later, a while at later, least, yes. yes. And then even before then, we told a couple of people who needed to know mm -hmm. around us because okay. we wanted our relationship to be private, but not a secret because we needed people mm -hmm. to keep us That's accountable. You know, so you know, as much as we didn't want the social media to know we weren't posting or sharing it everywhere that oh, I have a girl that I'm with or she has a guy, you know. But people needed to know that people needed to know. Mm -hmm. Simply put, you know, people needed to know. So we told certain people, and then we we were doing our thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're together. That, was... and, that, and that phase, majorly because of him, and he was, you know, out there and well known by the grace of God. So um I won't say it was it wasn't tough because like you said, the confidence and assurance of the place where everything started off from you know, made me not to even be skeptical that our relationship is not that you know, man you scared or sometimes the thought actually came, but I always had a, always had a way of you know, just keeping it back you know, because because i had confidence and i was assured and i value because this was something i actually always wanted because the pressure of wanting to keep up social media appearances is not bad it's not like it's bad but it has a lot of things attached to it so we discussed it first that's one thing it's not like one person wanted it and the other did not want it we both agreed on wanting that yeah. and it took off from there and it was so amazing it was it was our relationship was, was I, I think it's when we proposed a lot of people had an idea about it but when we proposed was when i actually posted it on my status yeah that's when most of people my, knew my well, i mean some people might have figured it out beforehand oh, yeah. but trust me for the, for the longest of time that we were together most people didn't oh, know yeah. most people didn't know and um so like it's like you said the reason why i wanted to give it a private keep it private sorry is because we wanted to be sure you know that together we are content mm -hmm. you know when it's just us, us being too. together and I've had that experience where right? some ladies will just want to be with you because of people know you and because of social media, they want to be mm -hmm. posting you fire. as boyfriend and all of that. So, you know, I wanted us to just be sure that we're content with each other, that even if all of that is not there, mm -hmm. that we really love each other that much. Mm -hmm. So so that was definitely the case. Like she said, it's not like I was the only uh, one who wanted it. On for two years you know, you before, yes. Yes, yeah, so talking about me proposing, our relation, that wasn't really a surprise oh, in yeah. the sense, you know, probably the proposal was a surprise. Like the moment of the proposal was a surprise because you weren't it was, expecting I it. I wasn't expecting it but, that way. Yes, but the fact that we were going to get married wasn't a, wasn't a surprise because we talked about it. I had gone to see, see our parents. Mm -hmm. They told us to go and do all the tests possible, all the medical checkups. <laughs> we did all of that. Yes, yeah. like way before proposal. 
even before that, like, just when the relationship started, not too long after, we did all all of those things we had been going for. I don't know if we had started cancelling by, yes. by then before I proposed, yes, right? We yes. So we had started cancelling, talking to people, preparing, you know, we're learning online, reading yeah. books together. And that's one thing that we didn't even mention much, but we, yeah, did, we did that, that a, lot, a lot, reading books, lot. watching videos, learning from lots of people who we consider to be mentors in and relationship. And we always talked about it. And we always talked about, you know, what it would be like getting married and all these things. So even when I proposed, us getting married to both of us wasn't a surprise. Oh, yeah. You know, the proposal was, but the, proposal, the way he did it, the way I did it was a surprise. It blew my mind. But the fact that I wanted to get married to her was known from the start, mm -hmm. you know, because we're Christians and that's how it's done. You know, so yeah, so the proposal that happened at my sister's wedding. So I had been thinking that how will I do this proposal? What would be the most unexpected thing that people wouldn't expect at all? If I were to do a dinner, maybe she would expect it. If I were to call friends together, maybe she would know that something is up, you know. So I knew when my sister's wedding was drawing close. Interesting, I don't know if you are aware. I made the decision to propose on the day of my sister's wedding. Really? In the sense that, that I should do it that way. I had been thinking for months how I would propose. Oh. It was just on the day of the wedding that I was like, what if I just proposed today at the reception? Wow. So it was that day. That morning, they were, I think they were waiting for me, you know, before we went to the church and I got to get the proposal ring. That very same morning, yes. You know, because I didn't want anyone to know. I didn't want any, so no one had told me. So even, the, I, because when I bought the ring, I didn't want to put it in my pocket because, you know, the, the case and all of that. So I gave it to to one of our guys, Paul, to hold for me. But I he even didn't held know. the bag when you went yes, to church. Yes, even, you even held the bag. So I gave that. that bag to Paul to hold for me. Not He didn't know that the ring was there. Okay. So the moment before I proposed now at the reception, you know, I, that I checked and I saw that they were about to call me, like after someone, it was me. And then I w was say, please call Paul for me. They say, Paul had gone. <laughs> this is, I said, what do you mean that Paul <laughs> has gone? I said, you don't, you're not serious. I gave Paul my bag to hold for me. Do you know what is in that bag? Mm. They're like, ah, Paul has gone. He said he has to go see someone. And then I went out and I called Paul. I said, Paul, if you value yourself and if you know what is good for you, you better be here within the next 10 minutes at most. If you are not here, then you and I, there will be trouble. Wow. That's what I called Paul. That, and Paul, I, I think he hopped on a bike and something. And before I knew it, he was there. And I was like, you are lucky, you because... <laughs> You were about to mess with me. So mm -hmm. when I was doing now my speech at my sister's wedding, mm -hmm. was when, you know, I now proposed. I was just sitting there. I was actually so tired. I wanted to go up and walk, wash the makeup off. But yeah. we were seated. I don't know what I was even thinking about. I just heard my name. I just remember I heard my name. And then I should come forward. And I was thinking you just wanted to appreciate me. Yeah. You know. Only for me to see something coming out of his bag. God. Proposal. Because I, the way he did it was why I actually cried. Because obviously I knew we were getting married. But I didn't know how it was going to And I remember I had a dream telling him that I dreamt you proposed in the most weirdest way. I don't know if yes, you, you, you said that. I told him that. I said I dreamt Mon you. Most unexpected way. Unexpected way. But I never knew yeah. it wasn't that way. And this was the most unexpected Expected. way ever. I'll never forget no it. No one anymore. was it. Like no one knew. No one knew. Nobody had an idea. Anyone I didn't tell anyone at all. No so it was not planned and organized. It by wasn't anyone. organized. Just by himself and God. Or anything. It was just between me and God. And God had told me that this is my wife. So uh, this one now was left with just me, how I was going to do it. And I did it then and it was it was it was nice. Amazing. It was really beautiful. It was a memorable moment for us. And um yeah, so we started planning the wedding. You know, so preparing for the wedding is another story altogether. Because it was not easy. Mm. It was not easy. Mm -hmm. I mean <laughs> It's, it's really interesting because that was not so long ago that we got married. It was, it's like how many days now? Weekend, close to yes, yeah, close almost to two weeks. weeks almost. Close to two weeks, and um, <clears> you know, it was it was just God. That journey was just God, you know, because thinking about the expenses mm. and um, how we we're going to do it. But one of the things we decided that we always had in mind was that we we're not going to waste money on things that are unnecessary. Yes, yes. That we we're not going to we spend what we first. don't have. Yes. You know, because you know when you want to get married, people are telling me that ah, you are known, you are a popular minister. You know, you cannot do something small. Mm. People would have lots of expectations. <laughs> like it's a royal wedding. I was like, ah, I know what I have in my bank account. <laughs> I know how I want to live my life. Mm. I'm not going to do a wedding how people would want it. I'm going to do a wedding based on how 
we can do it, what we can afford, and we will not go home looking for gari to soak the next morning. So, you know, people had lots of things that they were saying. And we thank God really for the people who cancelled yes, us. We're you grateful know, for them. We're grateful oh, because God. they really set us on track. No, that's a, one thing we should talk about, canceling. canceling. It's not like it's two or three weeks to the wedding. We Something did cancel in like early. months before. Early. Oh, it's several months very, before we got married. Very, healthy. Close to a year. It makes you see your partner from a different view. You know, the relationship is good, yes, but having people who, you know, don't know both of you as much, even if they know you, but, you know, are very much honest to be rigid about the process. Yes. Ask you very important questions. questions and you are able to answer them it's, it's very essential so we had several counseling sessions with people that we we admired their marriage people who, who we both could, acknowledged uh, yeah people who both acknowledged online mm -hmm. you know we had online counseling you know we had physical counseling sessions it's, that we we're doing regularly really amazing, yeah. different people you know because one of the things that we share both of us which I believe is one of the reasons why our relationship has been working and God has been helping us, is because we know that we there's a lot that we don't know. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not you know um, opposed to the fact that we don't know lots of things. You know, lots of people, especially us young people, like to pretend ah we know mm -hmm. ah, oh it's okay what is it now that we cannot do. For me, I know that there's a lot that I don't know, and she also accepts that there's a lot that she doesn't know. So we are always willing to learn. So we're always looking for new information. Whenever she watches something, she will send to me. I'll look at it as well. We'll discuss it for a few minutes, sometimes longer, you know, just to ensure that we're on the same page on, on, on certain things. And even in things that we're not on the same page on, you know, we still, at least you know yes. my perspective about this. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't be a surprise when we get married and you are like mm -hmm. different because we do have our differences a lot, actually. Yeah. We have lots of differences. But, you know, I didn't try to hide anything from her whilst we were dating before we got married. See, you know, I was unaware. Yeah, it's one of the things that I would always tell her is that I would show you who I am. You know, I would always, I'm not trying to pretend because I want to marry you. And then when I get married, then I change. I want you to know who I am. There's certain things that I do a certain way. There's certain things that I accept, certain things that I don't accept. You know, you know, and I would tell her that even sometimes it doesn't, it feels awkward sometimes. But I want you to know so that you know exactly what you're getting into. And um, I think that really helped us, you know, in getting married. So um, I don't know if we want to talk much about the marriage process. I'm not sure. No. Uh, I don't think so. But our marriage was beautiful. Yes. We, we, oh, of course. We, You've got praise. I, I'm really happy specifically because we didn't waste money. Yeah. You know, I mean, and we didn't allow people to to cause us to waste money. Pressure us. You know, because... Pressure. And, and and people, it's not like they, they do it out of bad intent. You know, some people, because of the excitement and they love you guys and they want the best. So there are lo lots of these suggestions. Oh, do this, do this, do this, mm -hmm. do this. And you, within your heart, you know that this money, you don't have it to do it. But there's this tendency of people who are, who are wanting to get married that they just want to do everything that they say do. Mm -hmm. You know, so God helped us to not fall into that trap that we try to just keep things according to how we can afford. And our, our wedding was one of the most beautiful weddings. Mm -hmm. I'm not just saying it because it is ours. But it was really beautiful, you know, having lots of friends and family together. I had a beautiful ceremony. I did a surprise song for her. I danced. Mm. You see that? You you mm. listen to that song. Watch out for that song. It's coming out wow. soon. I'll release it. Mm -hmm. You know, I did a song for my wife. My song. I danced with some friends of mine. <laughs> it was a truly beautiful was experience. mesmerized all over it. Mesmerized. <laughs> I mesmerized. I always do every single day. Mm. It's my work, <laughs> you know. These are the things that I do. So it was, it was truly beautiful, and we thank God that we're here. So that sounds like a good part two for me. Mm -hmm. okay. Sounds like a good part two, guys. I don't know what else you would want to hear. Life. Don't start sending questions like, what about this, what about this? If we want to answer, we'll not answer. <laughs> this is the part two that you asked for, and this is the part two that you get. So please pray for us. That's one of the things that we're asking for. Please, if you know you're someone who follows my ministry, and now the one that I have with her, you know, also being married, please pray for us and pray that God will keep us, God will continue to help us to love each other, respect each other, mm -hmm. honor and serve each other, mm -hmm. and that God will help our relationship to be a blessing not only to ourselves, mm -hmm. but to the world in general. Mm -hmm. So if there's nothing that you can even give to us as a gift, you know, your prayers, the best gift that you can ever give to us that we will truly appreciate. Okay. So I think it was a good one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining us from the Jubairis. And God bless you. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.